Mom, is it true that our government are, are our leaders? And they can make us do whatever they want? My teacher says we have to go to the nurse's office tomorrow. And they're going to make us get a hokey pokey. And if we don't go, then she will tell her friend in government. And, and he will write a statue that says everyone that did not obey will get their noses cut off. Can they do that, Mom? I'm scared. What have they been teaching you in school? It's time to homeschool you. Let me teach you the truth about our government. You see, we have all political power. And they are our trustees, agents, substitutes, indentured servants. And they are the ones governed, not us. Huh? What? Okay, sweetie, let's go get our laptop out of the car. Okay. <clears throat> Look what I have here. See, I went to a place in the internet called Ballotpedia. And I pulled this out for you and I made this for you so it can be a little more fun, full of color. And I want you, I want you to read it with me, okay? I'm going to read it aloud and you listen very carefully. Look what it says. <clears throat> okay, it says, this one is the Alabama state constitution and this is article one text of section two it says people source of power well that's the title now this is the provision the constitutional provision that's what we call these things okay this says watch listen to what it says that all political power is inherent in the people and all free governments are founded on their authority and instituted for their benefit and that therefore they have at all times an inalienable and indefeasible right to change their form of government in such manner as they may deem expedient you see hmm well 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 what have they not taught us in schools okay Read the terms for yourself and see what you have needed to know and yet did not know. They didn't teach this to you in school, but you know, sweetie, I'm going to teach you. All right? Love you. Okay, sweetheart, let's go look at another one. And you're going to know that you're going to find all your state constitutions in this wonderful place. It's called Ballotpedia. All right, let's read this one together. It's pretty long, but it's not that long. Let's read it together, shall we? All right, this one's... Uh, New Hampshire State Constitution, Article 8. The title is, Text of Article 8, Accountability of Magistrates and Officers, Public Rights, okay, Public's Right to Know. It says, and this is a provision, All power residing originally in and being derived from the people, all the magistrates and officers of government are their substitutes and agents, and at all times accountable to them. Government, therefore, should be open, accessible, accountable, and responsive. To that end, the public's right of access to governmental proceedings and records shall not be unreasonably restricted. The public also has a right to an orderly, lawful, and accountable government. <coughs> Therefore, any individual tax pa taxpayer eligible to vote in the state shall have standing to petition the superior court to declare whether the state or political subdivision in which the taxpayer resides has spent or has approved spending public funds in violation of a law, ordinance, or constitutional provision. In such a case, the taxpayer shall not have to demonstrate that his or her personal rights were impaired or prejudiced beyond his or her status as a taxpayer. However, this right shall not apply when the challenged governmental action is the subject of a judicial or administrative decision from which there is a right of appeal by statute or otherwise by the parties to that proceeding. 
<clears throat> okay, let's see. That was the whole thing. They had, there's a lot of stuff in there, sweetheart. We're going to have to break this down and look at each and every word. So I'm going to have to do that in a separate in a separate time because right now we're running out of time. We're going to ha go have lunch. Now, look what I want you to pay attention to. Look what it says here because we're talking about you have the power, you have powers better than Wonder Woman. Here you go. All power residing originally in and being, being derived from the people, all the magistrates and officers of government <clears throat> are their substitutes and agents and at all times accountable to them. See, not sometimes, sweetheart, all at all times accountable to them. And they are our agents, our substitutes. They're supposed to do everything for us as though it is us doing it. And of course, we're going to do the best thing for us, aren't we? So why shouldn't they do the best thing for us? They are our agents. They are our substitutes. And it says here, government, therefore, should be open, accessible, accountable, and responsive. I want you to pay attention to those things because this right here is very powerful. So is the rest of it, we, but we have to break it down. Okay, sweetheart, let's go have lunch. We'll get on this right after lunch. Sweetheart, there's another thing I need you to know. All right? And this is every all the bills of rights and declarations of rights belong to each and every one of the people. That's you. That's me. That's your friends. That's everyone, right? <clears throat> Except the government workers. They're they're in a different situation there. But I want you to understand that even the old constitutions, the ones that are, you know, how they amend constitutions or replace them or whatever. But regarding our rights. Government servants can never make them less. They cannot make them less. They cannot get rid of any of our rights. They cannot hide our rights. They cannot abridge our rights. They cannot curtail them. They cannot write statutes against them. They can't do any of that. So you can go ahead and look at every single state of all our 50 states. And you could also go look at the older ones. Now, here's an old constitutions. All right, look what this one says. These are constitutions of Texas. 1824 and it says 1876. This right here says Article 27. Well, let's see what it says here. The officers of the government clothed with any kind of authority are mere agents or delegates of the state responsible to the same for their political conduct. You see, we created our governments. We created and we wrote constitutions and instituted governments. We did it all for our benefit. And we made sure to let them know that they're just mere agents. So they don't get their heads all blo bloated and enlarged and thinking that they're superior to us. Like what you hear them saying now that they are our leaders they're not our leaders we are the leaders and they have to obey because you know what sweetheart they already they took something called an oath of office before we allowed them to work in our governments and i'll get into that later with you but you see they're bound to obey every single term in there everything and if they read it and they should have read it before taking the oath of office or what kind of nonsense was that they would have known that we have all these rights that they're supposed to actively defend and protect at all times. They can't decide at one time or another, oh, not today. I don't feel like it today. No, they can't because that's why they're getting paid, sweetheart. They're getting paid by us to defend and protect our rights, all of our rights. And later on, we'll, I'll talk to you about uh, different kinds of rights and how they, dif how they differ. There are different kinds of rights. There are some that are just temporary, and then there are rights that are permanent to us, that are sacred and inviolate, and they're forever rights that we have, that God gave us. Okay, but just for this one right here, see this little guy? That's like us. We're going to pay attention to the government now. We're going to watch them. We're going to watch them from behind bushes. We're going to watch them while having 
our dinner. We're going to watch them behind while we're standing behind a tree in the park. We're going to pay close attention because we know our rights and we know how to make sure that they stay inside their governed corral because they are governed and they have to obey. And we're going to make sure they do everything according to the letter of the law, the terms written. Because don't let them, sweetheart, don't let them tell you that if it, that they can do whatever they want, even if it's not written down. That's not the way it goes. They have to obey what's written down. We wrote it down. Our founding fathers were not that dumb. They wrote everything down. And so they, the problem is that they're not teaching you this in school, are they, sweetheart? But don't worry. We're going to take care of it right now. We're going to teach you, and then you can teach your friends too. Love you. Okay, sweetheart. Let's get working on another one. Look at this one. This one is from Virginia State Constitution, Article 1, text of Section 2. This one says this. People, the source of power. All right, that, these are the titles. Now, this is the provision. That all power is vested in and consequently derived from the people. That magistrates are their trustees and servants, and at all times, amenable to them. You see, sweetheart, they are our trustees and servants. And you know, sweetheart, I'm going to teach you this later, but just keep this in your mind right now, that if it says trustees, well, then it has to be, and it's in our constitutions, well, then that means it's a trust. It's a trust, and because they work for a, a particular amount of time, like say two years or six years, four years, whatever it is, that means it's by time, it's in, they are indentured servants because they're going to be our servants for a specific time, a duration of time, all right? And guess what? They're at all times amenable to us. We're the people. See, magistrates are their trustees and servants. Servants. Say that a lot so that you can remember they are servants, mere servants, indentured servants. It doesn't matter how they are dressed or perfumed. See what a no lovely young lady we see here? She, if she is working for us in our government, then she is our trustee, then she's our servant. It doesn't matter that she makes a lot of money or has a fancy car. She is, she has to be obedient to us and do everything for our benefit. They are our servants. You see, I love you. Okay, sweetheart, I have a bag of your favorite gummy bears. Go ahead and enjoy that. We're going to take a look at vocabulary. I know you like vocabulary. Well, here's a word that you must know, sweetheart. This one is the word status. And it's a really important word. And I know you're going to maybe bump into people that say, no, status is not really important anymore. We really don't need to think about that. And maybe, they'll, th maybe they don't understand themselves because we're not talking about like status like they do perhaps in India where you're born in a certain uh, condition and then you have to stay there or you can't get out of that. No, we're not talking about that. This is different. Let's, let's read it together. This you, you go ahead and chomp on those gummy bears, and let's read this together. Status, it means this. Position or rank in relation to others. Position or rank in relation to others. Status also means relative rank in a hierarchy of prestige, especially high prestige. That's status. Relative rank in a hierarchy of prestige, especially high prestige. Status also means the condition of a person or thing in the eyes of the law. The condition of a person or thing in the eyes of the law. Status also means state or condition with respect to circumstances. So, if you remember all those provisions, constitutional provisions that we just read, that we read together, you remember how it says that we are the people and they are our trustees, agents, servants, substitutes, you know, amenable to us and all that, right? Accountable to us at all times. Well, that should give you a very big clue who has the highest status because you see, they work for us. 
they're getting paid by us to work for us and obey the terms in those in the contract. The terms are in the constitutions. So if they are supposed to obey us, they are the ones governed. That tells you right there that they have the low status of servants. They are mere servants. That's their status. And us, we are the ones benefiting. We benefit. We are the masters. Because if there are slaves, there are, I mean, servants, <coughs> almost slaves. If they are servants, then there has to be a master. And the people are the masters. So look what it says here. Your status is one of the people as seen in the bills of rights and declarations of rights of all 50 American states. We are the creators and institutors of governments. See, we are the ones that created governments and institute them. We have that power. So you, my sweetie, are born free and independent. See, you're born free. You are not bound. You are not born in, into slavery. You're not bound by the oath of office, because you didn't take the oath of office to work for government, so because you really wanted to work there and you wanted to get paid. You didn't. They did. They willingly walked in there and gave the oath of office, and they were supposed to read our constitutions before they did that. So they can't be cheaters like that if they don't read. Well, that's, see, that's why they bound themselves willingly. We never did that. We are, here, we are just the posterity. We're to benefit. And we are independent. We are independent because we don't have to do everything that everybody else, we don't have to have permission. Can I live? Can I exist? Can I eat this or that? See, we are only subject to the law of God. The law of God we must obey means you don't hurt anyone. See, don't hurt anyone, then you can do anything that you want to do that makes you happy. You're independent. You're not governed by this government. They are governed. Don't let them switch that around on you. See, there. See, you are the posterity that they wrote about in our constitutions. You are the people with all political power, with authority and right to alter, reform, or abolish all government. Whenever, anytime, whenever... Your happiness and safety may require it. See, you are the beneficiary of our Constitution's trust indenture. And by right, you are the trust protectors. See, I told you, you have a lot of powers. You are to protect the trust. You are the trust protectors. See, you have the duty to instruct our government and to hold them accountable for wrongdoing. You instruct them. You'll find that in the Constitution. I'll show you. You're supposed to make sure that they stay in their lane and don't go outside on the wrong side of traffic and cause accidents. They're supposed to drive at a safe, in a safe manner and do everything we hired them to do exactly and precisely. And the only thing they can do that is not written down is say we told them to get to coin money. So, of course, they're going to need a building. Of course, they're going to need someone that, you know, hires them and, and trains them and all these things. We don't have to write that down. That is understood. In order to coin money, they have to do certain things. So that's what is not written that they can do. But they can't go and tell you that you have to take a hokey pokey or they're going to cut your nose off, sweetheart. They can't do that and write a statue to cut your nose off. See, that's not what we hired them to do, is it, sweetheart? Okay, sweetheart, pop quiz. Okay, pop quiz. In our nation, who has the highest status? Yes, the people do. Correct. Is the government indentured servants or the... Is it the government indentured servants of the people? The people have the highest status. Who had to swear or affirm in their oath of office to support, defend their state constitution where they seek employment and the United States Constitution before being permitted by the people to take a seat of office. Yep, the people that wanted to become indentured servants, they had to do that. They, have to ha they had to give and utter the oath of office and they had to subscribe, they had to sign their name. Correct. Who are the ones 
that are written about in the constitutions that government servants swore affirm to serve, support, defend, and protect their rights as a whole and their individual rights. Yes, the people are the ones they are to serve and support and defend and, and protect all of their rights, including individual rights. Correct. Who is getting paid to serve the people? Yeah, the government servants. They're getting paid to serve the people. Well, what? We're, I know you want to look at all, our, all the constitutions. We're going to do it over time, sweetheart. We're going to take it easy and slow. Now, we're going to read what the contracts, uh, contract expressly states. Okay, what are the terms of the contract they agreed to? We're going to look at that. And showed they agreed to by taking the oath of office and subscribing to it. We're going to look at all of it. What does it say in our Constitution, a.k.a. trust indenture? We're going to read it, read it, read it. It's going to be fun. Who is called trustee, agent, servant, substitutes of the people that are to be accountable and amenable and responsive to the people at all times? You got it. That should tell you something about who has the highest status. Did government servants forget their oath of office? And the terms in their contract? Hmm. Shall we remind them? Okay, let's go over one more thing, okay? Now, we're gonna, you're going to see some words in here. We're going to go over them later. But let's read it together, okay? You see, it is important to know your status because when you go to court, you want to come in as one of the people with all constitutionally guaranteed rights and full powers. And the one they are obligated and oath and duty bound to protect and defend your rights. All of them. Oh, sweetheart, I know you're not gonna court, going to go to court right now, but just getting you ready. Because your future, you never know what's going to happen in the future. So let's just study it now. So, as one of the people, capital P for the whole group, or people, individuals. See, we're as people as a group, and we're also individuals. See? So, as one of the people of the 50 American states, you have the highest status. All judges swore, affirmed that they would defend your rights and they got paid already to do so. Once the judges, which are government servants for pay and under a strict contract, know that you are one of the people of the 50 American states and not a government personnel like they are, they cannot say they made a mistake and mistook you for one of them, mere agents, mere personnel, mere servants of the people, with their low status as almost slaves. They cannot put you through administrative courts that never had or have authority over the people. See, the people are guaranteed constitutional due process in a true court of record. Look at the terms in our constitutions and see. You will find that every single time anyone wants to take anything from you, there must be a trial by jury with a jury of your peers in a court of record. Do you wonder why some try to tell you that status is not that important? See, as decorated as that servant is, see that man with his doggy? As decorated as that servant is, he does not have your high status. Because you are one of the people. Okay, one last thing, sweetheart. This is the last one, and then we're going to go at, to the movies. Let's go to the movies. Now, status is important because it is... The position you have that puts you above our government servants. It is a position in terms of relationship to our government. Who is the master and who is the servant? You see, government servants willingly indentured themselves in our trust indenture constitutions for pay and willingly took the oath of office to serve the people, to benefit the people to support, defend, and protect the Constitution of their state and the United States Constitution, which together they bring in all our bills of rights and declarations of rights 
and even our unwritten rights, as I'll show you later. Our constitutions have written terms that government servants must obey or they will be in real trouble with the law. See, to disobey would be a breach of contract. The people as a whole, that's why I put a capital, the people as a whole have rights that they must defend and protect. And then the people with a lower letter, P for people, individuals, single ones, have individual rights that they also must, that the government servants must also protect. See, the people, people have their highest status. Status is the power position you have in this nation. See, like this guy right here. Love you, sweetheart. Let's go to the movies.